Hello everyone, I am Sarthak and this is the second session of how do you play chess without knowing much theory. In today's video, we'll be playing against level 3 and 4 with the black pieces. Now without wasting any further time, let's directly go in the video. As I can see that right now white has played pawn to d4 and which is completely fine because it tries to control the center squares. Now as black, I'll also do the same thing in order to control center. I'll begin with pawn to d5 placing one of my pawns in the center, controlling the e4 square. Now, white has played bishop to f4. Now again, I will not try to explain theory, but for a general understanding, this is called as the London system. So white has played bishop f4, which is developing a piece and also trying to control one of the center squares, which is e5. Make sure that white also wants to put pawn to e3, but if white goes for pawn e3 directly, the bishop on c1 is totally stuck. That's why white went for bishop f4 first with the idea of playing pawn to e3 later on. Okay, so now we have to again focus on development of our pieces and we will always try to develop towards center. Knight to f6 and knight to h6 are two possible moves for the knight, but again, if we have seen the session one, I explained why should you not play knights in the corner. So I'll just play knight f6. White has played pawn to e3 and now white wants to bring out the knight and the f1 bishop. Okay, so now I can follow the same logic. If I play pawn to e6 directly, my c8 bishop gets totally stuck. So first of all, I'll try to bring the c8 bishop out. I can bring it to e6, f5, g4, h3. Now, just by process of elimination, I will understand that bishop to h3 is a bad move because the knight can eat me or the pawn can take me. Bishop g4 is possible, but I don't want to go in the opponent's camp, but it is a decent move at the same time. Bishop e6 is not a good move because it is like a short term thought process. If you are trying to just think for a short term, you will say that, you know what, I'm bringing out the bishop and I'm controlling one of the center's pawns, which makes kind of sense. But if you start thinking for the long term uh, development, you will realize that because of your e6 bishop, the pawn cannot move. Because of this pawn, the bishop cannot move. Because of this bishop, the castling cannot happen. So just because of your one decision, which is bishop to e6, all the rest of the development moves are getting stuck. So I'll play bishop f5. A knight c3 is a very nice move from white. It develops a piece and it also comes towards center. There's a hidden threat as white what they will do. Suppose if I play something like pawn to e6, right now I can realize that bishop is controlling or bishop is pointing to the c7 square. If I play pawn e6, they can also try to go with knight to b5 and try to attack me, for which I will be replying by knight to a6. So suppose if I am knowing theory, so I will just continue by pawn to c6. But I am assuming that the viewer of this video is not knowing these kind of attacks because in the last video, I read one of the comments that said that we get stuck when the opponent tries to attack me. Now, what should I do about that? So I'll invite the attack. I'll hope that white tries to go for knight to b5. So suppose I play pawn e6 and I will want them to play knight to b5. Okay, they are not doing that. But let me just explain the process. Even if knight b5 is done, a very common mistake from black players at the beginner level is they just play pawn to c6. Now this is a mistake because actually the knight on b5, the idea is they are trying to hit c7. Even if you play pawn c6, you have not controlled c7. So the knight can simply go knight c7 check. The bishop is guarding it so the queen cannot take it. And if you move the king, there goes the rook. Now, what is the better way to deal with this? The better way to deal with this is you just try to understand that, you know what? They're trying to attack c7 square two times. I am defending one time. So how can I put one more defender? The knight on a6 is one of the handy moves. Now, you might argue that, you know what? Earlier I said that knights on the rim are very dim, but it's like if opponent is trying to attack you, you have to save your pieces. You cannot just give away your rook in order to develop towards center. You have to save yourself. Also, suppose after I play, suppose if they play something like knight f3, pawn c6, I kick them off, bishop comes out, takes, takes, bishop e2, eventually I'll be playing pawn to c5, and if pawn takes, the knight can jump in. There are many other ways to develop here. Knight can come to c7, 
and it controls one of the center squares and again we can start b5 a5 b4 something like that bishop to d3 again a developing move and also coming towards center now i can play bishop to d6 knight c6 bishop e7 everything is possible but again in the last session i mentioned that you have to also keep an eye on pawn structures now if you ask yourself if you remember the last session who likes to protect a pawn it means a different pawn likes to protect a pawn so suppose in this case if i just don't care about what white is doing and i just continue with my own plan they might take me i'll have to take like this and suddenly what has happened that on the f file i'm having double pawns now it is still fine to play this position the position is still equal from both the sides but at this level i don't recommend for you guys to have a bad pawn structure so you should just understand that before they try to take me you know what what if i just take them white captures with the queen again we have to develop our bishop and we have to do quick castling in the meantime i also try to understand some of the threats this is one of the interesting topics that you have to understand when you are trying to play chess and when you are trying to develop your king towards castling so in this process you have to look at on which direction the king is exposed it means the black king is exposed on this line which is a light square diagonal i will not say that the black king is exposed on the e file because there are two different color pawns and from the previous session again when in a file you are having two different color pawns it is called as a closed file black king is comfortable always on a closed file i realize that the black king is kind of exposed on this direction so many times suppose if i go for a normal move like bishop e7 they can try to swing in a check and they can try to take the pawn how do you deal when the opponent is trying to attack so the best reply would be that you have to anticipate one move before the attack takes place so this comes with practice again you have to practice a lot you have to see only because you if you will practice you will lose some of the games you will start analyzing your games and you will realize that why attack is happening you know how the attack is happening so in this case i'll just show you suppose if i play a normal move like bishop e7 they can go queen b5 check if you go something like queen d7 they can go queen here and now the, they have taken a pawn the rook is hanging there's only one way to defend it which is queen c6 you go like this and the game will progress probably you can also try to go for queen c7 and if they take you take the game goes on but you will realize that white is already two pawns up now how do i deal with this so i have to just cover the exposure line the king is exposed on the diagonal which is completely open so i have to try to put one of the pawns to make the diagonal a bit closed so what can i do i can play pawn c6 the diagonal is automatically closed knight to f3 is a fine move i have to develop my bishop now here again i have seen many many players what they do is they try to bring the bishop out on b4 square and the idea is they try to pin it but you have to also understand that after you play bishop b4 what is the opponent going to do so after you play bishop b4 the opponent is just going to castle and your bishop on b4 will be slightly misplaced so you have to think that white is right now going to castle on the g1 square so where can you put the bishop right now so that in future it can attack towards the king so you will realize that bishop d6 is a better square so i'll go bishop d6 because if the king castles the bishop is eyeing on h2 now if they take i would have taken by the queen they did not take which is completely fine it's time to castle they are playing pawn h3 and again you are about to complete a development so we'll play knight to d7 there are two choices of playing a6 and d7 so knight d7 forming the knight pair they are again not castling they are delaying the castling again in the session one i explained the same idea that if you have castled and if white has not castled you have to simply try to open up the file in which the white king is so i'll realize that white king is sitting on the e file which is right now closed white is closed because i can see two different color pawns what is the best way to open up the file it means i want to exchange pawns how can i do that i can play pawn e5 now i have to calculate what if it takes me i'll take it back if it takes me again i'll take it back which is completely fine so 
So I can go pawn to e5 and I want to just open up the e file. Now white has castled, but it has castled at the wrong moment. Now it is black to play and find a tactic. Now by general rule, always remember guys, that if you're having two pawns in the center, you can find a lot many tactical pinpoints. First of all, I can see a fork here. If I go pawn e4, I'll be attacking the knight. I'll be attacking the queen at the same time. The pawn will be protected by the d5 pawn. I'll go pawn to e4, queen goes back. I'll simply take it and queen takes. Now here again, we realize that we are simply plus two. So whenever you are plus two in your games, you have to follow the rule of plus two, which I mentioned in session one. Rule of plus two is again to start exchange of equal value pieces. The more you exchange, the stronger your position will become. So how can I start exchanging equal value pieces? We'll come to that discussion in a bit. I just want to point out something different has happened in today's session. If you look at the king's position from both the ends, white has castled on the queen's side and black has castled on the king's side. Now, this is one idea that you have to understand. It's not theory, it's just an idea. And I always say that you should focus more on learning new ideas rather than trying to memorize all the theoretical aspects of the game. Now here, you have to look at where the king is sitting right now, the opponents. So white king is sitting on the c1 square. I have completed my development fully. I have to just try to initiate the attack on the white king. Now to attack the white king, you have to first of all realize on which direction the king can be exposed. So it is very important because right now if you look at the white king, the white king is sitting on the closed file over here. It is also sitting on a diagonal which is covered by a pawn. Now here, if I was having a choice, I could have pushed pawn f4 and exchanged the pawn hoping to open up the diagonal. He will again take me and close the diagonal of the king which is a slightly difficult task to achieve because the knight is kind of pinned. If I move the knight, I lose the queen. I can try to open up the c file. To open up the c file, I will have to try to push pawns, exchange, and automatically these two pieces, the queen and the rook, will swing into the c file and start attacking the opponent's king. I can push pawn to c5, but there's a small problem. The problem is they can take d5 and suddenly they'll be putting a lot of pressure on my knight. So I want to kick this knight and then try to achieve pawn to c5. How can I do that? Also by general practice, what happens in the opposite side castling, the idea is that I will start pushing the pawns on the queen side, white will start pushing the pawns on the king side. It is a general practice done by both the sides. Okay, so I'll push it again. They go knight to a4. Now I have to again try to see that you know what, I am plus two, so exchange of equal value piece will always help me out. So what I can do is, I can just try to go knight to b6 because I am trying to exchange equal value pieces. Okay, so this is one of my ideas. I want to go knight takes knight. My opponent did something else. Now again, if you are having an idea, remember chess is always a two person game. If you are having an idea and your thought process is that you know what after I play knight to b6 I expect my opponent to take me and then I can take by the pawn or by the queen depending on the situation but opponent has played something else this is the moment of surprise again I have explained the moment of surprise and shock in session one of the series so I recommend that if you are new to this video you can just watch session one and quickly come back to the session, you will understand what I'm trying to say. In this case, I realize that white has pushed pawn on g5 because it wants to kick my knight. I have to first of all save my knight because the knight is attacked by a smaller piece. If knight takes knight happens, pawn takes knight will happen and suddenly the g file will become open. I'm trying to open up the c file because that is where the king is, but at the same time, they are trying to open up the g file because this is where my king is. I'll save it by going knight to e4. They went knight to c5 and now again, because I'm plus two, I can start exchanging equal value pieces. This is very, very important to learn. You can just take, you can take by the knight also. Okay, so white has moved queen to g4. Now remember, 
I was expecting white to take my bishop by the pawn, which did not happen. So again, it is a moment of surprise for me. I have to realize that this is where white has made a blunder because the expectation was to take the pawn. The reality is they just played a queen move to g4, which is not directly creating a checkmate on my king. So I have to save myself, always save your pieces. So come back, you can come back on d6, you can come back on e7. I would try to come back on e7 because I have to follow rule of plus 2. Currently white is plus 5 but again I can come back so that in case they push a pawn my bishop will be happy to take h4. Okay so white has played pawn to f4 but here you have to also understand that if two pawns come on f5 g5 and if they try to achieve this f6 square it is going to be a bit dangerous. So again, I guess this is the perfect session to answer the question, how do you react if your opponent is trying to attack you? Many people, they start scratching their heads off that, you know what, I'm getting so much confused here. I don't understand how should I stop the checkmate coming on my side, which is a very, very common practice I've seen beginners do. They don't care about opponent's attack and they still focus, you know, that I have to start going in the opponent's camp and just go for the kill. You can try to calculate knight c4, queen to a5, what will happen after that. But you are plus 5 here. The end game is winning for you. You just have to stop these pawns from rolling down the board. How can I stop that? It means I have to block it. I can go pawn to f5 without much of a thought. Even if they take on passant, I'll be happy to take it back. Okay, so they have moved the queen to h5. Again, completely fine move. How can I again block the G file because they want to achieve pawn to G6 at some point of time after playing Rook G1 maybe. I'll play pawn G6 myself and now you'll realize that the G file F file is completely closed. Okay, so once I have closed my king side, I have to start going back to my main plan, which was to start pushing pawns and go for the kill. I can play knight c4 here, I can play pawn a5, pawn a4, everything is just fine. So I'll just make a move. They are just going queen g2 because there's, there's no way to open it up. There's no knight that can be sacrificed on f5 or there's no light square bishop. So this dark square bishop is kind of blocked by its own dark square pawns. So you can take as long as you want here to launch the attack. Okay, rook e1, again, not doing too much. Uh, let me just go for the attack directly. Okay, I can take this pawn, I can take this pawn. This is a free pawn. This is not a free pawn because the king might take back. Also, I'm plus five, which is more than plus two, obviously. So I can follow my rule that when you are more than plus two, exchange equal value pieces, anything goes here. If you are thinking that, you know, like instead of pawn a2, can I go knight f2? Of course you can. Of course you can. So now the queen is about to happen. My opponent did not react to my plan, which was to make the queen. So I'll just make the queen anyways. Okay. The king has moved to c2. Currently black is plus 14, which, which is a huge margin in the game. I will have to save my queen. So I'll go queen to a2 with the idea of going queen to b3, check. So now we can go queen to b3, check. We can go knight c4 now. Anything goes. We can go pawn a3, a2, again make one more queen if you want to. I guess everything is fine. Okay, now here opponent is trying to exchange queens. I can realize that it's probably a checkmate here. So I will, instead of exchanging queens, which can be done again, you can obviously go if you want to simplify the game, if you're not able to calculate, if you don't want to calculate uh, in general, you can obviously exchange queens, you're plus 15 in the game right now. You will, black is going to win this. But uh, if there's a quick way to finish the game, why do you want to delay it? And now there's rook to a one checkmate. So this was with level three. Now we will be going with level four. You can rewind the game, you can try it and practice on your own. Start with level one. If you are a complete beginner, start playing with level one, then go with level two, then go with level three. And it will take you at least two to three months to achieve level four. But uh, you can take as much time as you want. 
I'm not teaching any theory here. I'll make more videos about what are the beginner ideas that you can focus and still defeat level three, level four, even level five. But we are not going to level five until unless we have achieved a decent leeches rating, say about uh, 1400 on rapids. Okay, so let's go to level four now. All right, so now we are playing with level four and level four has played the same move pawn d4. We are going to reply by playing pawn d5 and level four is doing the same opening as level three, bishop to f4. And by now you should understand it is called as the London system. And the main idea is again, they're trying to bring the bishop out to control center. This is called as the Jobawa London. They want to go here to go for the kill, but we'll deal with that later on. We don't want to go again in, in the world of theory. We just want to develop our pieces. So knight f6, pawn to e3. And again, remember, you want to play pawn e6, but is it the right time? So again, you have to think about short term developing plans and long term developing plans. If I play pawn e6 right away, I will struggle very, very hard to develop my bishop. So first of all, I'll play bishop f5 followed by pawn e6. Okay, so they are playing bishop d3. As I said before, before they try to capture you, you capture them. We will take and again, I can play pawn e6 or I can play some knight move or something. But there's one thing that if you have watched level three game carefully, you should understand after queen to d3, white is having a plan. Suppose if you play something like pawn e6, you have to remember this. Queen to b5 will be a check and it will be a target on the pawn because your king is exposed on this line. The king is not exposed on the e file because you are having e file closed because you are having two different color pawns, but the diagonal is exposed in which the king is. So you have to close it by playing pawn c6, pawn c3. Now you can just complete your development by pawn e6, bishop d6, and finish off the development. Bishop to e5, completely fine move. You can focus on your castling. Okay. Now bishop e5 is an interesting idea. Why it's an interesting idea? Because if I don't care too much and if I just think about what my developing plans are, after I have castled, I will have to play knight d7. But as soon as I play knight d7, bishop is hanging for free. So these are small, small things that you have to understand that you know what? They are not capturing me and uh, I cannot play knight d7. You have to make a different plan. That is where you have to not memorize. Don't focus on memorization, at least at this level, that you will memorize the opening setup. You will just play knight d7 and you will realize, oh my God, what has happened? How did the bishop get lost? So I have to make a plan. How can I bring the knight out? Remember, towards center, I will not want to go to a6. Okay, a6, c7 is fine, but because I have said that control of center is very important, I will make a different plan to bring the knight towards center. The second plan can be, okay, I will not play knight d7, but how about knight c6? Now, how can I achieve knight c6 here? So to achieve knight c6, I'll have to push c5, and then knight c6 is completely playable. Okay, queen b5, as said before, queen b5 is a nice move. The idea is that uh, they want to hit here. So again, what you have planned here, not every time it works, that you want to achieve knight c6, but ask yourself, is it the right time to achieve knight c6? The answer is no, because queen b7. So I will just go queen c7, protecting my bishop, protecting the pawn, protecting the b7 pawn. And then I can achieve knight c6 in future. We'll see what happens. Uh, bishop takes bishop, queen takes, and probably they can take here. Okay. Now we are down a pawn, but still it is completely fine position. Why it's completely fine position? Because we are having center control. So I can still continue the game by playing queen c7 or queen c6. They go back and we say thank you for the pawn. And knight c6 is playable in the next move if everything goes fine. Okay, so knight f3 is not threatening my queen, not threatening any piece of black. So I'll achieve knight to c6 knight to b3. Now my main plan was to bring the rook here, but I cannot just, you know, I cannot just uh, focus on my own game plan. You have to remember and you have to keep telling yourself, always focus on opponent's last move. Try to understand what your opponent is planning. Okay. So 
opponent is trying to cut my queen for free, I have couple of options with my queen. You have to choose that option which controls center. But, uh, okay, let's go to e7. All right. Now, again, if you see this particular position, you'll realize that uh, you have castled, you have developed everything. You are having a pawn in the center. White does not have a single pawn in the center. Now, what is better than one pawn in the center? Two pawn in the center. Rook to d1, trying to attack one of them, which is already protected kind of. So we'll just bring our rooks in the game. Like this, you can bring this rook also. Rooks like open spaces, as I said in session one. So this file is completely closed because of two different color pawns. D file and C file are half open files or semi open files. Say rook f d8 and rook c, rook a c8. Okay, so again, my opponent is not focused on castling. I have to open up files in which the king is. Now, how can I do that? This is very important question you have to always ask before you try to attack. You have to ask yourself, what happens if I push pawn? So they can take, and if you take, queen takes queen. Knight takes back, and the game will go on. But I just want to focus on my own development. Let's, let's keep developing here. They are again not castling. This is very, very important to understand that we are making so many moves and my opponent is not even uh, worried about castling. So somehow we have to try to punish it. How can we do that? So suppose we have to play pawn to d4 and we want to exchange, um, we want to open up the e file. So first of all, let me just, uh, hmm. there are many moves actually here. Let me just play queen c5. Try to bring the queen and now the idea of pawn to d4 is kind of good enough, but they castle at the right time. I will go queen to b6, which is having an attack on the pawn. Okay, white protected it. Suddenly you'll realize that white's rook on b1 move is very bad because rook on d1 was placed on a semi-open file, but white changed the rook from d1 square to b1, which is a closed file. So b file is completely closed. You are having two different color pawns. Suddenly the b1 rook has, is having less activity as compared to the d1 rook earlier. There were better ways to save the pawn. So suppose if I try to attack it, how do you protect the pawn? You don't want to involve a five point piece just to protect a single point pawn. You could have just played something like knight b3 back. The queen would have protected it. The queen could not attack it because of the knight. Knight f3 was fine. Anything was playable, anything was doable, but not rook b1. All right, so now because we are having our rook on the half open file, we want to open this file because my rook is super happy and I want to make it more happy. So I'll just go pawn up, which allows knight c4 for some point, but uh, it's completely fine, I guess. You clear the path, knight to c4 has happened. And uh, now what we can do is we can try to see that they're trying to attack my queen here. What can I do? So there are many, many moves here. You can move the queen back. You can move the queen to c5. You can move the queen to, um, I guess, uh, b4. But I will not play any of those moves. Why? Because my opponent has created a threat on me. And uh, I want to reply my opponent by creating a counter threat. Now, what is a counter threat? A counter threat is that, okay, they are trying to attack my knight. How can I counterattack the knight in such a way it becomes a pin? Something like queen to a6. Now you should understand what are they planning. They are planning to basically destroy your pawn structure, never destroy a pawn structure. They are trying to capture your knight. You will have to capture by the pawn and the king will be open on the g file. So before they are trying to capture you, better you capture them. Again, this is very, very important. See, even level four, up to level four, the computer is reacting in the same manner. We were having a plan of capturing it. Our expectation was that computer will capture us back. Computer did not do that. So always come and save yourself. Now here we are plus three. So I want to move the knight in such a way that helps me exchange equal value piece. So I can go knight e5 because I'm putting some pressure and now I will just recapture first of all, always recapture. And now you have to get the pawn back. So you can win a free pawn here. You can win by the rook, anything goes here. I can go with the knight. 
this is hanging all right always focus on opponent's last move try to understand your rook is very happy because it's sitting on an open file and right now white queen is just coming in the lion's den it's like it's like they are coming on the same file in which my rook is you have to just move the knight somewhere and the rook will be starting to attack the queen now this in chess is called as discovery or the discovered attacks the question you should ask is that why will the queen not move if i move the knight somewhere so the answer to that question will be the queen will not move if you will attack something which is bigger than the queen so if i move the knight and think of attacking the king only then the queen will not get the chance to move and i can take the queen for free so i have two different checks one is knight f3 other is knight e2 very soon very quickly we can learn that knight e2 is a bad move because queen can take but knight f3 no one can take and we say thank you for the queen we are currently plus 9 in the situation we just want to force equal value exchange and we are going to win the end game so what i can do is i can realize that you know what let's exchange rooks there goes one of the rook and now we have to see that uh, i cannot exchange the second rook as of now but uh, i want to now go for the kill so the best move is here actually queen to e2 but i will not play that the reason i'll not play that is there's a very common mistake i have seen beginners do even intermediate players that they blunder their back rank so what happens that suppose if the rook was here imagine if the rook was somewhere over e file and if i try to just go for queen to um a2 i'm i'm up a queen and uh, i'm going for the kill i'm just going to win the game in couple of moves but because i did not focus too much about my own king safety i got checkmated so before you go and go for the final kill remember the words before you pull out the big guns always meant make sure that you are having some escape square with your king you can play g6 you can play h6 everything is fine and now no one can stop your attack so here you are being a bit cautious and now you can go for queen e2 you can go for queen f2 later on and we can start checking multiple times now what's the best way best way is to just go for you know multiple checks and go for the checkmate here i will not do that why will i not do that because again this video is dedicated for beginner players the i and i want to kind of make the process of finishing the game very simple keep it simple guys so how can we keep it simple here i can go rook to d4 to exchange rooks then i'll cut one of the pawns make one queen and do ladder checkmate as simple as that so i'll go here they will take i will take back and i will let the king roam around i'll cut one of the pawns and then i'll just make a queen that's it okay now because i have made the queen i'll see that the king is on the fourth rank so first of all what i will do is i will just try to cover the fifth rank and then it becomes a very simple ladder you go here you go here then there and then checkmate okay all right so i hope you learned something from this session the main idea was to explain the thought process of how the match should be played and what you guys have to do is you just have to start playing don't uh, think too much that uh, it's all about theory no it's not it's just about learning and implementing and again relearning okay so what you have to do is you just start your practice with level 1 if you are able to defeat level 1 switch to level 2 if you are able to defeat level 2 switch to 3 4 so on and so forth and uh, if you are having a rapid rating on leeches or on chess.com above uh, say 1200 then you should start focusing on learning some openings okay but before that i don't personally recommend to learn any opening any theory you can play actually you can play whatever you want but every move that you make should control center that is the only requirement as i was doing in this 
uh, session the next session we'll be going with level 5 and level 6 level 5 will be playing with the black pieces level 6 will be playing with the white pieces i know it's not for um, beginners but still i would try it, i would like to demonstrate that uh, how can it be done you know without applying without knowing much theory how can you still play with uh, a bit high level computers and uh, try to get better of them so i'll stop the session here if you like the session do let me know in the comments if you if you were having doubts if or if you were able to implement it and also i would ask you guys to subscribe the channel so that the channel can reach out to more such audience and that's it from my side guys i wish you have a good day and i'll see you in the next video bye bye